All right, in this video, I want to talk about biofilms. And just to kind of jump off here with an intuitive understanding of what a biofilm is, we've all had encounters with biofilms in one way or another. Um, the one example that I can give off the top of my head that I can think of is if you're in a river or pond and you're walking around barefoot and you step on a rock and that rock is really slippery, right? You know, you, you maybe jump to that rock, you slip and you fall and, you, you know, you're like, wow, that was really slippery. What happened there? That is a biofilm, okay? Those are specific, you know, specialized surface attached communities of um, microorganisms and you know those microorganisms can be very diverse it doesn't necessarily have to be one species of bacteria it doesn't even necessarily have to be just bacteria I mean you can have yeast protozoa etc also eukaryotic organisms basically is what I'm saying eukaryotic microorganisms as well as bacteria so you're dealing with you know a very a very very diverse um, group in some cases it is just one bacteria and they actually form this really, really unique three-dimensional structure. And we also have experience with um, biofilms, you know, in our teeth. If you've ever seen, you know, somebody who has bad plaque buildup on their teeth or seen a picture of it in a dental book or something like that, you would realize that um, that, that as well is a biofilm, okay? And, so, and that's what gives that kind of slimy feeling on your teeth in the morning when you wake up. Those are the results of biofilms. So now that we kind of have been intuitive, something in the environment that we know, that we can understand what this biofilm is, let's talk a little bit more specifically about what they are. So as I said, they're specialized surface attached communities, okay? And they're referred to as biofilms. And I also said that these biofilms can consist of a single species multiple, or multiple collaborating species. Um, that can form a range of organic and inorganic. They can form on a range of organic and inorganic surfaces. Okay, so they can form on all these different surfaces. And um, obviously, the first step in forming on any surface is going to be this idea of attachment. And um, I should say first, though, why these biofilms form in the first place. And generally, the reason these biofilms form in the first place is, you know, nutrients. They're going to form in places where nutrients are plentiful. So you're going to want to establish essentially like a home base in a place where there's lots of food, which makes perfect sense. And the goal is to stay where the nutrients are abundant. So if I want to stay where the nutrients are abundant, it would be a good idea to be able to attach to this rock in the pond where all these nutrients are. And these biofilms can then be um, cued to start forming by environmental signals. Okay, some of those environmental signals might be, you know, iron, con um, iron concentrations, pH, temperature, oxygen availability, pressure, all different types of environmental um, triggers that you can think of pretty much could, could trigger the formation of a biofilm. Okay, and again, it's really beneficial not only to the individual species if it's a single species but it could also be in you know really beneficial um, collaboration for for multiple species to, to engage in because this provides them an ability to maintain themselves in a place of high nutritional value a place where there's lots of nutrients and basically it's like a three-step process okay you have the attachment the growth and then the dispersal so in order to start the attachment, it's usually started by, you know, specialized uh, structures such as flagella, pili, or lipopolysaccharides. Lipopolysaccharides are found in gram-negative bacteria, um, and they coat the surface, okay? So they put that sort of initial coat down on the surface. And what that allows then other bacteria to attach to that coat, to that beginning, to um, eventually develop and grow and more cells bind to the bacteria, um, to the other bacteria, and what they end up forming is this specialized three-dimensional structure. And this is not just, you know, one dimensional, it's not just flat on the surface, it's, it's the three-dimensional thriving community, okay? And it provides protection. I mean, it provides protection from temperature, from pH changes. It really provides a really nice, um, very um, easily maintained environment here for the bacteria to survive in. So they grow and they develop into a specialized three-dimensional structure. And they actually have the ability to communicate with each other. You should know this, or, or maybe you don't know this, uh, that um, bacteria have this really unique ability. And that is, they have this quorum sensing, okay? And basically, they're able to communicate with each other, not only members of the same species, but also members of different species with chemical signals. And these chemical signals are used to, you know, 
convey essentially information to other bacteria. You know, it, it gives them an idea of how many bacteria are in the community, for instance. How many other cells are here with me? If I'm a bacteria in this biofilm, I want to know how many other bacteria are here with me. And I do that. I, I get that sense by this process of quorum sensing, this releasing of what's called an auto-inducer, and it, it enters in the environment, and we'll discuss it more in the future. Um, but the bottom line is that there is a form of communication going on there, and they can sense the environment through it. So... Basically, the biofilm matures, it um, goes through a, another period, uh, and develops a complex three-dimensional structure. And um, basically, this process of developing this is, it can, can also be cured by um, starvation. Um, this process of dispersal, rather, can be uh, cured by starvation. So once the nutrients begin to run out, so initially this was a really great idea. Um, there was a lot of nutrients in this area of the water, and you know, as more and more of these bacteria, you know, begin, obviously, if there's a lot of nutrition, these cells are dividing, they're creating more and more cells, and more and more cells require more and more nutrition, and eventually the nutrition just runs out. So a really good cue for the, you know, for this, um, basically this uh, biofilm to dissolve, that's the word I'm looking for, dissolve, so this um, biofilm to dissolve is just basically starvation. So, you, you, you know, that mutual agreement they had between all these cells and the and sometimes different species um, turns out to be bad in the end or, or turns out to after a while just no longer be useful so they have to disperse and find a new location with new nutrients